Welcome to another episode of Oakland Outdoors, friends, and I'm your host, Jerry Kunith. Glad you could join us this week. We're out here in the Gulf of Mexico on a beautiful day. It's about probably 85 degrees now. It's 11.15 in the afternoon. It's going to go up probably to about 90. Not a cloud in the sky. We're out here fishing off the beach of St. Petersburg, Florida, with Captain Ryan Farner and Captain Randy Collins. We're aboard the Voyager, which is a 34-foot pro-line boat. Uh, it's really nice riding. We're out here in some beautiful weather, and we're catching some king mackerel. So I hope you stay with us, and we're going to have lots of good fishing action for you today. Captain Ryan Farner of Bike This Charters invited Jay and I down to fish on his boat. But that weekend, was in the shop getting two brand new mercs mounted on the back. Luckily, his good bud, Captain Randy Coleman's, was gracious enough to take us with him on his boat, the Voyager. Let's join these two knowledgeable captains, First Mate Brenda and Eric, a local custom rod builder and fishing shop owner for a day of king mackerel fishing. But first, we need bait. These little bait fish will hit these sabiki just like, it was, like if you had caviar on it. For some reason, the shine of the gold on the hook attracts them. And they're called what? They're called sabikis. Sabiki. Sabiki rig, yeah, it's very popular. It stands for fish skin. Fish skin. There you go. I learned something new today. But uh how far are we very have well. to go ready the spot? We got another 12 miles to go to the spot. And we're looking for a big pot of bait right now. So catching fish with no bait. Just going to a gold hook is basically what they're doing. Just on a gold hook and then it's bait fishers. Little, it's got a little uh on it. Uh, ooh, nice one. Great. This is caviar of these things. Blue runner. And those fish are called blue runners? Yeah, it's in the jack it's family. Cigar minnow right here. In the jack family, but they're, they, what we're looking for is anything that's white. These kingfish love white bait. Oh, okay. Because they can see it. And that's what they... Shiny. They, and they the see the flash in the water. Straight down the right. All the way. Here comes some bait fish. Down deep, Ryan? Yeah, they're all following. Yeah, okay, I see them right there. The yards or trout? Picked up a fish. The, the, yeah, one, the one interesting thing about king fishing on this coast versus the Atlantic, on the Atlantic, the main bait they use over there is the shad or a pogie. And that's basically all they use for king fishing. Whereas on this coast we use a large variety of baits. Uh, we use we use the shatter pogies, we use blue runners, ladyfish, sardines, cigar minnows, and they really don't seem to get quite all that selection of bait over on the east coast. So it helps here definitely have a huge selection of bait. You never know what they want to eat. And you'll be trolling your trolling those uh, live bait. You're gonna make a cut bait or we're gonna make it live. It's all okay. the livelier the better. Pliers they're my Leathermans and they're folded up in there. This is invisible, you can't really see this stuff. <laughs> this is a new product. It's expensive, but it works close to work. It's called Just fluorocarbon. <laughs> and who's it by? Fluorocarbon Cigar. is by Seagar. Oh, okay. the, the better stuff is by Seagar. It's supposed to help us. Every trick you can get. These kingfish have very good eyesight. And if it doesn't look natural, they're not going to hit it. Now, Captain Ryan, you guys are, are you fishing treble hooks or uh, single hooks or what? Uh, single front. Here's, here's the typical rig right here okay. for you. Right here. The, you got your single. We're using a VMC hook. And all these hooks are 4X strong. 
and razor sharp. Got a single nose hook. The bait goes through the edge of the nose. And then you have your treble hook. This is called the stinger. Mm -hmm. And that's normally what gets the kingfish. The nine out of ten fish will all be caught on this hook. And it'll be snagged. <laughs> and it'll be snagged on the back of the body or that is right. Right, right, right in the bait? mouth. Right Hopefully in the mouth, but right not the all the time. Not all the time. You get them on the side of the cheeks and uh I mean, even the 4X hook, sometimes when the king gets red in the corner of his mouth, will crush it. They got a pretty strong bite then. Do they have a hard mouth too? Oh, yeah. It's a soft, lots and lots of palate, lots of teeth. Now, about how deep do you think these fish are going to be? Well, we don't know yet. They, they're. We catch them on top and we catch them on downriggers, so okay. where, where we're in 40 foot of water, so we could, they, where, we're, we'll put some downriggers down top, about... Where are the weights here? Uh, 30 feet. No, uh, where, the, where are the weights at? Back here? Yeah. So, uh, we don't know that we're going to find them. Had a good report of them catching them on planers, so out here Wednesday, so hopefully... Is this what you want to use right now, Randy? Yes. See all these birds are hanging around this bait here. This is where the reef is. The bait stays right on top of the the structure. So we're going to kind of circle this and see if we can. Did you get that other down? And those kings are going to follow those bait schools, the, right? The king will follow the bait school. They'll follow the bait school all the way up to the, this bait school. Will, they'll move further north as the water gets warmer, and these kings just kind of migrate with them. So it's kind of like a. A chain, you know, they follow them. When the bait school moves, the kings move. So we're hoping we're in the right spot here to find them. Get one of them scaled sardines there, young fella. And on these sabiki rigs, we can hook almost anything. I just had a lost a small king on it. Fortunately, I got the bait rig back, but I probably was bringing up a little bait and it hit it and just went streaking right across the water. Wow. And it just popped, so you could right you could see them. Oh yeah, the, I mean the the line was leaving a wake as it went across the water. Oh neat. So there are definitely a lot of kings here. We just got to There we go. We got one on flat line. Got it, Ryan. Fish on. A little fish. Eric, get this flat line in right here. Back or something. That one right there. There he is, double header. Grab that there. Double header, another fish on. Alright, here's the small. Trying to get him. I don't think there's much size for this sucker. But then you never know sometimes. There we go. Take the line, baby. Yeah, really He's smoking it, it out. Just bring, just bring this one a little closer to the motor. They're still going straight out. You're pulling much drag ride? I didn't hide mine down. I didn't hide mine. Man, listen to that sucker take out that line, huh? Ryan, you think that's a king on there? Yeah, it's small. small Ryan, yours okay. might not be too bad. Mine's tiny. Yeah, yep, you got two. Oh, I'm just going to say, man, this would be a good bait. So that's this fish got bit in half by a barracuda? Half in barracuda. Look at that. Back half of it's gone. How you doing? Shaking his head. He can feel him in the rod shaking. Yeah. That, you know, he's acting like a big fish. You can't really tell, you know. Usually a big fish will hit it, and I mean, they will run where just flat out zzz, for a minute they'll run, and you gotta. He's got some weight on him, bud. Huh? Got some damn weight on him. Staying high in the water. Oh, 
There he is. Get, just get the little, yeah. But I mean, he's a star. Nice little fish. He's coming right around, get around. Okay. I'm gonna bring it dude right up here. Boy, nice fish. That's a nice start. Yeah. Let me grab those hooks out of here real quick. That's called a king fish, king mackerel. Nice going, Ryan. We want one double that. Get the gaff out of him. Good job, Ryan. Get the gaff out of him. See his teeth? They're beautiful fish. We're looking for one, we one about twice this size. There you go, Brenda. Drag loose. Why is he jumping out there? That sucker took some line out Yeah, he did. I want to get clear up on the bow, Brenda. Yeah, I am. Way to go, Brenda. You're doing good. Give me freaking Cuda for. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There you go. You got him. You got the hold of him. I like seeing him jump. Boy, it's beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's in this spot. Should I keep rolling? Yeah, pop and reel. There you go, just like it. Just like it. There you go. Honey, it's very good. Alright. I'll let y'all see what he looks like. Okay. That's a big fish. <laughs> wow. Way to go, Brenda. Some big teeth. Hey. Look at the teeth on them dudes. It's called a barracuda. This is a spotted kingfish. It's the wrong thing, but. <laughs> Darn it. All right, we're getting closer. <laughs> How about that, Brenda? Yay. Way to go, lady. No, I got one arm bigger than the other one right now. Yeah. Plays till tomorrow. We're going to let him go. <laughs> Let them go now. Those fish, will, those hooks that I just cut on him, will rust right out. You don't put your hand in this guy's mouth. You don't put your hand in this guy's mouth because he'll definitely they go like this in the take water a snap at it all the time. Way to go, Brenda. Way, nice wrong job. Color. But whatever, we'll get him next time. Fish on, good fish. <laughs> yep, just hold your rod up. We're gonna walk you through this. Get it in, right, Eric? That's a good one. Uh, All right, we'll put this up in that front. Just hold it steady. Right, man. man, listen to that puppy run. run. I'm gonna, we're gonna walk here. I'm gonna turn this boat around. You're gonna go up to the front. All right. Just kind of hold it up, just like that. Switch. Come over here. Come over here. Right through here. Get the rod tight. There we go. Yeah, we're we'll walking we'll good, right? Right up front. There we go. Thank you. Even pressure on it. Hold it straight. Look, aim right at him. Aim, hold, hold it straight. Yeah, hold it straight at him. Reel on him. So you can't reel no more. There you go. Perfect. He's going to probably make another run. When he does, let him run. Coming back at us. That's a gas. There he goes. That big river. That's got plenty of in there too, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. I 
And there he goes, catch and release. That's a lot of fun. Way to go, Jay Winkle. Yeah. And champion. Hey. <laughs> now there's something to videotape, turn around. There you go. Videotape show hands. Come right back around here. Come right back around up the other side. Come on right what back happened here, here, Jerry? What were you doing? Jerry's how'd you get, fishing. How'd you get that pole in Jerry's your hand? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, somebody grabbed my camera, and handed me a pole. <laughs> These really are nice. This is what a what kind of rod and reel? That's a custom rod. Custom. Built by Eric made. Oh, that's right. Eric yeah. made these rods. Yeah. What kind of reel is on there? Uh, Shimano. Yeah. 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 That fish is bigger than mine. That's no fair. Yeah. There he is. Catch and release. All right. Way to go. First king, huh? Yep, first time. That was nice. Thank you. Already. See, we finally have seen Jerry catch a fish, huh? <laughs> Is that an unusual type of thing? Well, usually I'm on camera and somebody else catches a fish. Jay and I usually are. I'm going to put out a big horse on this. They are fun, aren't they? Yeah, they're, 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 they got so much muscle for such a small fish. Yeah, a lot of spear. Like I said, when we get when we get a 30 plus over, it'll take you 45 minutes to get him in. Uh, wow. Just, uh, Running at the boat right now. Side angle. That's why he's not acting like he's a big fish right now. Might be as big as that first. One. There he goes. Oh, he's 15 pounds. He had a, he had a nice run on him. No. I saw him on top of the water. He did a big circle. But we've got one in the box bigger, so there's no reason to sure? killing it. Yeah. They got one out over there too. Yep. These fish are hanging right over this little structure. Yeah, getting bigger. Bigger? Yeah, longer. Longer. A little bit longer, but he's not bigger. Release. Excuse me. Got him. Thank you. Ready to go and get Randy? Hold on a second. Get the finger under the seat. On the outside. Right by the tail. There, you son of a gun. Let him go. Trying to save you, bud, if you just relax. There he goes. There he goes. Try to keep him alive for next time. Hey, Randy. Yes, sir. Captain Coleman's. We're here as guests on your boat today to Voyager. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this boat? 
Well, this is a 34 foot pro line, which uh, it's it's a custom rigged uh, for the professional tour, which uh, the Southern Kingfish Association just started. Matter of fact, uh, the first one was uh, January of this year down in the Keys. Uh, pro line and Donzi are, are one and a part of uh, trying to, I guess, get their foot in the door of all those the professional king fishermen. We have a total of, I think, uh, 28 teams who fish the pro circuit and uh, been fairly successful. Uh, this is one of their pride and joys is the 34 footer, which they custom designed for each individual uh, fishermen. You know, there's every everybody has a little different nick of what they want to put on it. Uh, other than that, uh, they're they're very good sponsors. They take care of me uh, very well in all the tournaments. They they help me out. Uh, very good support team from the factory. So you know, I'm really I'm really impressed with their operation. Yeah, they they really did a good job with their. They redesigned this hull a couple of years ago, and uh, it's just made a world of difference. It's a very very smooth ride. It sets down on a wave nice which uh, when we're fishing Louisiana and uh, <laughs> I gotta laugh, he just got dipped with some water. Your, your co-part is soaking wet, but we're My on the- My cameraman has drowned. <laughs> he is drowned up there, but uh, we're sitting here on the hook, which uh, it's turned into some nice uh, four to five foot seas out here. And what happens in the Gulf, they get so close together that uh, you know it doesn't have time for the boat to recoup so the One. front end will dip down every once in a while. When he was sitting on the very <laughs> front end. Yeah, so, sorry I had to laugh. But. How deep are you going to run this downrigger? How deep are you going to run this downrigger, Ryan? Um, see we're right at about 30, not 40 feet here. We're going to, I'm going to run this one about about 10 feet down. So 10 foot down. Well, Eric, one of our fishing buddies here on the Voyager, I understand that uh, you have your own tackle shop, don't you? That's right, I do. It's have our own little shop. It's down in Largo, Florida, and do do a nice little business out of it. It's basically my wife and myself and a couple part-time employees. Um, do everything from uh, from repairing rods and reels, selling tackle and information to building custom rods, which is what we specialize in. The name of our shop is Betts Fishing Center. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, now I understand too that uh, your buddy's rods on this boat on the Voyager here are custom made and who made them? That's correct. We built uh, all six of the kingfish rods for him on the boat. That's one of our specialties is kingfishing. We do, uh, we do ship them all over the southeast U.S. The blank of choice we use is an ugly stick blank and we normally build them six and a half to seven foot long. And what we do, we have normally a, a 12 to 14 inch butt with a gimbal and we put the foam on, put the reel seat on and the guides we're using on this rod are the AFCO light guides. Uh, what they do is they create a real smooth rolling line so when a fish hits, especially the kingfishes you've seen, they take off quite fast creates no drag on the line and no friction, yet allows you to put a lot of pressure on the fish. And on this, on these rods, what he, colors he chose was gold to match his boat. Um, but uh, we build any type of rods from lightweight fly rods up to 130 pound class marlin rods. Oh, that's and pretty neat. That's a really nice looking rod too. Thank you. I actually steered the boat. Turn it around, Randy? Yeah, he's right back. Hey, you want me to turn the boat around? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can. Big fish on.
Hey Ryan, um, I just laid that bait rod down up front there. You right. could uh, get that away. You want to go up front, Randy? Uh, yeah. He's going to come right by. He's coming right now. He's coming right back. These fish swim right. Put in neutral, Eric. They uh, swim right back to you. And then they'll see the boat and take another run. Yeah, well, that's, that's how we got uh, 8th and St. Augustine. Okay, I'm in neutral, Randy. Right, back it up. Good. Yeah, that big guy's smoking some line, eh, Randy? Yeah. Give it some gas, Eric. Back it on up. You want you want to get up front, Randy? Nah, sure. Eric, I'm really when you reel on when you reel the point drive. There he is. Little. Yeah, he's little. He sure had some spirit though. He yeah. sounded like he was a big guy. you to grab them. That, that, that's an interesting hook up. Yeah, had him in the back, yeah. Yeah, let's see those. I mean, if you can, hold them up so we can see those teeth. Here, let me get a Smile shot in there in that mouth. Pretty good, guy. Do you want me to borrow your finger? <laughs> okay. There he goes. Back to get bigger. This is how strong a kingfish's jaws are. Not only do they have a lot of teeth, but the jaws are strong. This is a 4X strong VMC treble hook that they just crushed. This is probably one of them that we lost that the hooks pulled because it got crushed in the corner of his mouth. That's pretty impressive. And this is smoked dog. Smoked dog? Smoked dog. That's why we ain't caught the big one yet. <laughs> oh, God. Did you have that checked in? Smoke dog or mustard. Sounds like a winner to oh, me. There we go. They got to have some crazy salt too. What'd well, Jay and I had a fantastic time on the Voyager. But all days and good times, unfortunately, must come to an end. We caught some great fish, learned some new fishing techniques, and made some nice memories. But the best part was making some great new friends to enjoy the outdoors with. Thank you to Captain Randy Coleman's and Brenda for the hospitality on the Voyager. To Eric for his pointers and info. To Jay's dad, Hank Wankel, for giving us a place to stay in his beautiful home. And to Captain Ryan Farner for the invite to a great day's fishing on the Gulf in his native Florida. Well, this is Jerry Kunith, and take care. Until next time, thanks for watching Oakland Outdoors Video Magazine. <laughs>